Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today we want to talk about how WhatsApp can help you for commerce. Now, WhatsApp is around for a long time and I think I had a bit of a slow start when it comes to e-commerce, but that's going to change now. So with me on the show, I have Arjun Paul. He is the CEO and co-founder of Zoko.io. He is a former bridge engineer turned project manager and tech founder of a startup with unique technology that seamlessly integrates WhatsApp commerce tools, generative AI, and Shopify to help brands make millions on WhatsApp. Arjuna has an extensive, ex, extensive experience on using WhatsApp for commerce. He began by assisting his mom with her home-based fashion business on WhatsApp, eventually serving over 200,000 customers. Now with Soko, a Y Combinator-funded startup, he serves thousands of brands across 43 countries. So let's welcome him to the show. Hi, Arjun. How are you today? Hey, Klaus. Thanks for having me. As mentioned, WhatsApp, I think that's my impression, had a bit of a slow start when it comes to e-commerce. Um, some merchants use it for customer support, but then a long time, nothing really happened. But that has changed. And I think there are specific countries where WhatsApp really has picked up. Tell me a little bit on how you got into this whole area of WhatsApp. Yep, definitely. Um, so um, I started helping my mom. She had a Facebook page. So her and a friend's wife, they were in business together. They would uh, stitch clothes, post pictures of it on a Facebook page. And the local ladies would message them, you know, ask them, hey, what's the price? And then uh, basically buy from them over the Facebook page, right? Um, and then um, the business started to grow and she wanted to reach more people, which meant running ads on the Facebook page. So that's how I got, uh, you know, roped in to help her run ads, which are still pretty complex for a regular person to run ads on uh, Facebook, right? And um, so then one of the things I noticed on the, on the uh, Facebook page, the interactions is that conversations would almost always move organically to WhatsApp. Right. Uh, because people would uh, comment and then uh, at some point a WhatsApp number will get shared and then conversation will move there. Right. Mm -hmm. So and then uh, the uh, so next week when she had new stuff to post, what she'll do is instead of uh, she started sharing it on uh, WhatsApp groups instead of posting on Facebook. Right. She'll post on Facebook, but also share on WhatsApp groups. But then uh, notice that um, organically there's more response on WhatsApp. Right. So then the business slowly shifted towards WhatsApp. And at one point we were sending 250,000 messages across 500 WhatsApp groups, <laughs> 10 folks manually. There's no API at that point. Right. Um, and um, we were making like $80,000 a year doing that. So no website, no payment system. Everything was cash on delivery and uh, like no accounting system. As long as we made more money than we were spending, we were like, okay, this is working out great. <laughs> So, but it kind of shows you the power of WhatsApp, right? Um, because uh, my mom or a lot of people, uh, their first introduction to the internet was uh, through WhatsApp, right? So they don't see these limitations of, oh, there's no checkout, there's no payment. <laughs> Who asked for all these things, right? Uh, and they were actually doing a lot of business there, right? Uh, and so that's how I, so at that time I had quit my job and wanted to start something on my own. Uh, but it was a, I'm a bridge engineer by trade, so it was about uh, buying a company and running it. But um, then this kind of caught my attention. Like, there's a huge potential here. Uh, you know, this could be a business. And funny thing is, uh, I, I, even at the time, I wasn't thinking about it as business. But other businesses started reaching out to us asking, hey, how are you reaching um, all these people on WhatsApp, right? So what, what happened there was my, my co-founder now, Arumel, who's also a neighbor and he's a brilliant engineer. So he came and saw what we were doing and he said, hey, uh, how stupid can you be to um, you know, manually message 250,000? <laughs> people uh you know we had to like uh, reformat phones after every broadcast right uh because it, it would fill up with images so he built an unofficial api on whatsapp to automate this whole process right so that's how we were doing it uh, consistently every week and then other businesses said hey can you help us do that and we'll pay you to do that right so then we started charging like 500 dollars a month for unlimited whatsapp here <laughs> <laughs> two businesses and we got like um, uh, uh, quite a few customers and we're making quite a lot of money at that point uh, doing this so we realized hey, this could be a business uh, but then uh, whatsapp did not have an api and it was always a constant battle between us and whatsapp them trying to block us us trying to find 50 other ways to keep sending the messages and that's how we got into this business and WhatsApp came out with their API and that first month we released our product and um, uh, kind of went legit 
uh, with the SaaS model, um, you know, uh, usage-based model and all that stuff. And we build a real business. And at, at one point, we got into Y Combinator. And um, YC gave us the advice of, uh, um, a, um, you know, find 100 customers who love you. Yeah, you, you're making money, but that doesn't mean, mean anything. But um, uh, forget about monetization money and all that stuff. Find 100 customers who really love you guys. Um, and we realized out of the customers that we had, the Shopify core was great because we were helping them do uh, actually make money on WhatsApp, not just one-way messaging or anything. Um, um, you know, they could make money. In fact, we we scraped 1.5 million uh, Shopify stores at that point and saw that close to 300,000 of them had the WhatsApp widget installed on their website, right? Um, they could have had any world-class product like um, uh, Intercom or Zendesk or Freshdesk, but they chose to put WhatsApp on their website. They, they a widget. It could do it, nothing, right? You message, it'll, it'll come on somebody's phone. When you get 50 messages, you don't know who is messaging, what did they buy from me? <laughs> because we, we know that problem, right? We we send out 250,000 messages, a lot of messages come back. We can't even check what it is, right? So we knew that problem intimately, right? So we were actually solving that for them, right? So first thing we did is hey, we'll give you unlimited capacity to talk on whatsapp you'll never lose a message right everybody so you have full control of your whatsapp channel you can have 100 agents on one whatsapp number talking to customers right in fact we have uh, quite a few customers who have over 100 agents on one whatsapp number talking to customers helping them buy products right so uh, so that that capacity is the first thing that we delivered to uh, customers. So then as soon as you get control, customers will get ambitious, right? Uh, they'll say, okay, the whole point why I'm talking to customers is to actually sell them stuff. <laughs> so give me this uh, one, two, and three feature that will help me uh, help product discovery, um, collect payments, uh, and all that stuff, right? So then um, they would think, uh, organically think, hey, I'm sending out these emails and SMS, nobody's opening those. Uh, um, and can I move some of those communications to WhatsApp, right? So that is how this sales, marketing, and customer support on WhatsApp evolved. Uh, it kind of evolved to that point, right? That ambitious use of WhatsApp. And you'll see that in certain countries, what we call WhatsApp as countries, right? Um, where uh, if you are in a Shopify merchant or in any e-commerce merchant in these WhatsApp as countries, that is where 80% of most smartphones have WhatsApp on it. Then you have no choice, right? Uh, you have to be on WhatsApp and you have to do business on WhatsApp. In fact, you can just test it out by, if you're not using WhatsApp already, just to turn on cart recovery, one, just one feature, cart recovery uh, on WhatsApp and just see that are you making at least 5x more money than you're doing it on eBay, right? Very high bar, like 500% more on uh, <laughs> WhatsApp or not. If, if yes, you should look at uh, products like us, right? Uh, can you do more? Right. So very, very easy win. Uh, uh, very, it's and once we get a customer on a demo, it's very easy for us to convert because um, you know it's very easy for us to show value uh, and and you know, pure dollars without having a PhD. You can understand I'm making more money on wines than I'm spending on the product, so I should probably keep using this product, right? So uh, and it's not us; it's actually WhatsApp. Right. Okay. I love the startup um, story that um, you basically found a, a problem and a niche and, and built a solution around it. And what I didn't know is that you really can have like hundreds of agents on one WhatsApp number. I think that's a limitation that a lot of merchants have in their mind. It's like, yeah, I only have one phone and that would probably explode after a week. So there, yeah. there is a solution that. Um, what I'm interested in um, is the automation part of it. Mm -hmm. With sales, with marketing, with customer support, a lot of automation obviously comes mm -hmm. in. How do you deal with that? How can you um, help merchants to make their life easier? Yeah. So um, earlier, uh, we as a company, we were in focusing on um, on um, automation, like basic chatbots, uh, because we felt, um, uh, because see, where did we come from? We were doing 250, or, or um, target customers didn't care much about uh, automation, right? In Europe, yes, uh, people care a lot about automation, because simply because they don't have the people to uh, talk. But in India, I think about what were those 300,000 customers, one in five Shopify stores that we tested, right? What were the, why did they have WhatsApp in the first place? They did the, uh, what do you call, automation is something that they may have arrived at now, but initially they only want one low hanging fruit is I just want to be able to talk to my customers, right? And I don't want to miss my customers, right? So that's where we started with, uh, and uh, 
till about six months ago, if you asked about uh, chatbots, we'd say, no, we don't do chatbots. There are lots of other companies who do chatbots because we personally haven't seen a chatbot that works really well, right? Uh, like incredibly well or blows our mind. Right? Uh, somewhere it'll get stuck and ultimately end up with the agent itself, right? But um, but with chat GPT, things kind of changed, right? We turned believers into this automation thing. And we started with an ambitious use case saying, uh, stick with the money part, follow the money. Can we make a sale on WhatsApp, and we introduced um, a, a chat GPT-driven uh, bot, right? Basically, if a customer messages, it'll talk to you, it'll show you products from WhatsApp, uh, you know, it'll collect your address, uh, it'll collect payment, send you a notification that it's done, and basically take money from you and put it in the bank, right? Um, and it's possible today. So we released that on a major brand's uh, website, uh, I mean, on a, a major brand's um, um, site, and uh, two person within uh, 18 days, two percent of their orders was done by the chat GPT bot, right? Uh, basically, right from start to finish. I'll, I'll send you a video right after this just to see, you know, like how it navigates all the uh, all the questions. Like customer says, I don't want this product. Can you do you have uh, this other thing? Oh, can I change my address to this? It'll do everything, right? So then it is useful. And the funny thing is. The merchants, like uh, because it's a big brand, there are lots of other people who are handling these conversations and all that stuff. They'll see these conversations saying, yeah, that's exactly how it's supposed to <laughs> work. They, they don't care that there is uh, AI or any of that stuff, right? So at that level, if, because there is automation, yeah, we think now uh, this whole new thing will open up where uh, fully automated order taking can take place inside WhatsApp. And if you spend, uh, you know, a couple of days on it, support is like the lowest hanging fruit. You can easily automate a, a lot of this support, right? But we as a company, we, we are a little bit more ambitious about uh, what what should be achieved. We'll start with the money first. And because one thing we noticed, to be successful as a company, you have to be close to the revenue. Right. Uh, like even if you're the world's best support system, you're still a cost center. <laughs> so people will see you as a cost center. Right. But if you start with the revenue, being closer to revenue, they'll think twice about, um, um, you know, moving away from you because you are bringing in a lot of revenue. Right. So uh, our plan is to eventually address the support function, but uh, we'll crack this uh, sales thing first. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree on that. Sales first, revenue first. Otherwise, you will not survive very long as a company. Now, mm -hmm. talk me through the process on um, how implement how to implement uh, Zoku.io into Shopify, and um, what's the process then um, going forward that you can really take orders on WhatsApp. Yeah, so um, um, it's a, a relatively simple process. You have to install the uh, or Shopify plugin. You have to have a Zoku account, and then. Um, uh, um, Facebook makes you jump through a few hoops to you know get verified, uh, get activated on WhatsApp. You have to be in compliance with your shop, uh, uh, commerce policy. For example, if you sell muscle supplements, you may not get approved uh, to use the API, right? Uh, but if you are selling fashion or clothes, uh, you are a show in there. Like if you're selling pets, um, you cannot be approved. But if you're selling pet food, you're okay uh, there, right? Um, so uh, basically, they'll review all that before they let you in. Um, and um, so you have to go through those process. And uh, as part of a sign up process, we take care of all that stuff, right? Um, and then um, you have to install the Shopify plugin um, and then install a private app. A private app is where a lot of our automations, uh, you know, that's the thing. For example, if you place a COD order, and uh, you, we'll ask you for a reconfirmation automatically. If you confirm, we mark the Shopify order as confirmed. Then when you return, we'll mark that. So all that requires that private app integration. So it'll take uh, like 10 minutes to do that. Um, uh, basically input the keys and then you're set to go, right? So usually customers install these apps and then set up their order notifications uh, first, right? So anything you're sending, communicating on email, you'll start to communicate on WhatsApp. And then the second level is you'll set up your marketing automations like cart recovery, upselling, reselling, all that stuff. So money starts to come in. And then once you get a handle of that, you'll get ambitious about, okay, um, can I build Clavio like flows on WhatsApp? Uh, if, if Can I send messages to a certain segment of people? Or, all that. Right? So depending on your, um, what do you call it, level of advancement within the Shopify ecosystem, you will start to uh, set up more and more automations and all that stuff, right? But uh, immediately you can get control over WhatsApp. 
you can set up your basic notifications and your marketing money starts to come in and then you can get more ambitious uh, with uh, what do you call it, that Clavio like thinking about email you can bring that to WhatsApp and uh, make more revenue so that's the and we we help all these customers kind of um, uh, onboard them for the first 30 days and our onboarding team's goal is you have to make end of 30 days you have to make three times more money than you spend on zoko then we know then uh, you know uh, it will take a lot of convincing for them to leave us <laughs> so that so we handhold them for the first 30 days to hit this target and then um, you know uh, on an as needed basis we give them support okay in regards of messaging the customer uh, what's your experience because obviously there's a difference if you're sending sms messages out people are more sensitive and receiving the number of messages on sms um, compared to email, what's what's your stance there on how often should you message WhatsApp messages? <laughs> yeah, so um, it depends on the type of notifications, right? Um, and also depends on the market there you're in. Like, um, for example, if my mom um, was late by a day on sending her updates, people would message her and ask, "Why haven't I seen any updates from you today?" <laughs> Right. So that's India. Uh, so it's very, a very different behavior there. Right. But yet, uh, but in Germany, I wouldn't think, to, uh, you know, I wouldn't dare send unsolicited messages to anybody there. Right. So it's it's very different uh, on the market. So you have to be aware of that, uh, what we call it, uh, which geography and which market you, you have to know your customer. Right. Uh, so that's one. But then it's always good to uh, have proper opt in. Right. Um, so uh, proper opt-in and customers should know that you are collecting the WhatsApp in order to send you these kind of messages, right? So a good foot in the door is to uh, start with the uh, order notifications, which everybody will appreciate. They'll actively give you their number, right? So start by having pop-ups with um, uh, WhatsApp numbers being collected instead of email. Um, and then uh, on the checkout process, uh, make sure you, they know that uh, if your number exists on WhatsApp, we'll send you updates on WhatsApp, right? So that's a good stepping stone into this. So then once uh, they're okay with that, ask them for opt-in uh, to receive marketing messages, right? Which our system handles all that. Like if we'll uh, uh, get opt-in, we'll tag you as opt-in. Then if you send a marketing broadcast, uh, we'll auto opt out people who have opt out. So then you don't have to worry about it. So if anybody clicked opt out at some point, it will not go to them. So you don't have to worry about it, right? Um, so start sending that out, right? So as you um, see, one thing I can tell you is we work with about uh, 2000, um, 2000 stores and we already have access to the entire buying population of India's WhatsApp numbers right? within a year. So this will scale very quickly, uh, like much more than you think. Right. Um, so, but initially you should be patient and say, don't uh, try to become like the world's best marketing company on day one. Uh, so slowly as you collect your uh, my list will be clean, better, double opted in, and you'll start to make money eventually. Right. Uh, so that's the, uh, that's what we recommend. And that's what we help as part of the onboarding process, kind of set these expectations, know what to do. Because the initial reaction is just blast it out, <laughs> just blast it out on WhatsApp. <laughs> And you will make money. But what will happen is you will also see that the health of your account goes down, right? WhatsApp is a very good process, actually. So what they do is on day one, they don't let you go crazy. They will put you on what's called a limited tier of a uh, thousand messages, right? So then if you hit your tier and your health is green, they'll automatically upgrade you to 10,000. Uh, and then if you hit that t uh, limit and your health is still green, that means people are not blocking you. You're not going crazy. Then 100,000 and then unlimited after that. So if you behave well, you can literally uh, send it one click of a button. You can reach entire uh, India's population one click. But you have to, uh, as long as you're sending the right kind of messages. No, I like this process. I mean, that um, keeps every marketer sort of in, within their boundaries and not going yeah. crazy. And I think it's, it's it's very important, as you said, um, to have a clean list and um, to have happy customers instead of building up a reputation as a spammer. That doesn't help exactly. your, your business there. Now, tell me a little bit about the pricing. How does that work? Yeah. So we have a few tiers. Um, um, what do you call it? We start at like $35 a month and can go up to like $400 a month. Uh, and then depending on uh, what kind of, uh, let's say, if you do more than, if you have more than 5,000 um, uh, conversations a month, you have to upgrade to the next plan. Um, so we have a stepped plan which will let you upgrade. Um, uh, what do you call it? Upgrade to the higher plans. 
then one uh, advantage from a price point for us is that um, uh, we don't mark up WhatsApp's rates, right? So uh, a lot of companies, what they do is they'll add their own markup on WhatsApp rates. So you pay a lot for your messaging. So with us, uh, it's easier for you to get an ROI on your WhatsApp marketing. And we charge you a subscription fee for giving you uh, this, uh, you know, uh, agent platforms, um, the ability to segment, run automated rules, um, these um, advanced automations. We have, basically, if anything, we have exposed the entire Shopify API in a visual manner. So you can kind of build the craziest flows you want, right? Um, so you get a lot of those advantages and we charge you, if you build a flow, we'll charge you like $5 a month for a flow, right? So, uh, so what happens is that even the smallest customers, they can actually use it. And if you, once you start to see revenue and you want to kind of uh, jack up your marketing, you have to upgrade to the biggest plan. But even in the biggest plan, you only pay $400. Even if you send a billion messages, uh, you have a, a predictable cost next month, right? Uh, you only spend uh, this much. Okay, no, that's, that's very important. Before we come to the end of our coffee break today, is there anything that you want to share with our listeners that we haven't covered yet? Yeah, um, so what do you call this? Um, the... If you're not using WhatsApp in a WhatsApp market, you should start using WhatsApp, right? And it's not either or. Um, you know, it, it's. I think everybody sold on this now. It's it's omni-channel, right? You have to be on email. Basically, you have to be on. Customers will choose what they like, right? Uh, so there will be a good chunk of customers uh, who like WhatsApp. So you shouldn't ignore them. You should be on WhatsApp. And um, uh, what do you call it? Um, so that's the first stepping stone, right? Especially if you're not doing cart recovery, please do cart recovery on WhatsApp. It's free money just sitting there. Uh, like clockwork, uh, one in five carts get um, recovered. It's free money flowing in. You have, you don't have to do anything. You just turn it on and money will start coming in, right? So that you have to do. Uh, whether you do it through Zoko or anybody else, you should be doing that on, uh, on uh, WhatsApp, right? But... Um, if you also, there are certain types of businesses that are great fits for WhatsApp as a channel, great fits for two-way communication. So if your product requires a lot of attention, for example, premium watches, custom-made clothes, um, even um, uh, what, what would you call cosmetics, um, we have seen because women are super careful about uh, what they put on their face, right? They'll spend a lot of effort into buying the right product. And once they find it, they'll stick to that, right? So that uh, that's great uh, process to happen on WhatsApp, right? Because they'll have a question, they'll have a follow-up question, you can answer it, you can show them products. Um, so once that customer is there, then it's a customer for life, right? So kind of think about um, uh, the nature of your product and the nature of your customers and see if WhatsApp is a great fit. If it is, you're sitting on gold there, right? Uh, like you, competition cannot beat you. Uh, you know, you'll have these customers for life. Uh, so it's great uh, for that. So kind of think about uh, um, whether your product uh, or the nature of your customers is a great fit for Mark, uh, WhatsApp, right? This two-way communication, which you can't have on email, you can't have on SMS. It only can happen on WhatsApp, right? So think about that. Um, and um, yeah, so those, uh, everything else, uh, you know, you kind of have to discover it, right? But these are like the low hanging fruits that, uh, you know, don't think, to, don't overthink, just do it, right? Uh, but other than that, you have to kind of discover uh, uh, the, what do you got? The gold inside uh, WhatsApp as a channel. Yeah, I think you're 100% right. Uh, a golden site, that's, that's I think, in, in a nutshell, what WhatsApp is. Um, I think it's a, a channel that is very personal to people, um, has a high opening rate, um, mm. and not as saturated as email. And mm. I think you're much more flexible than doing SMS marketing with WhatsApp. So I think it's it's a great, great channel, and I love to see that really growing. Where can people find out more about you guys? Yeah, so our website, uh, zoco.io, um, so that's the best uh, place to reach us. And um, we have a WhatsApp button there, so just message us on WhatsApp. We all, for all customers, we do live demos, you know, get all your questions answered um, and all that. So, you know, that'll be the best place to find out about us. Thanks for giving us an overview about WhatsApp. Um, as I said before, I think it's a very strong marketing channel and sales channel, and uh, every merchant out there should definitely look into it. Thanks so much for your time today. Yeah. Thank you. Great speaking to you. Hey, Klausia, thank you for tuning in to another episode. Before we wrap things up, I've got a couple of important points to share. Firstly, if you have enjoyed today's episode and want to support the show, here's a simple way to do it. Help me out with that algorithm magic by liking, commenting, and subscribing on your favorite podcast app. And if you're feeling extra generous, leaving a rating would be great. 
Your support helps me bringing more impactful guests on the show, and it makes it easier for others to discover the podcast. Secondly, I want to talk about to all your business owners out there. Here's a question. Are you tired of juggling everything in your business while struggling with your marketing tasks? Fed up with hit and miss experiences of hiring freelancers or agencies that don't quite get your vision? But perhaps you're not ready to commit to a full-time in-house marketer just yet. Well, I've got a solution for you. Introducing our fractional marketing team. My team and I provide top-notch experienced marketing professionals to become an extension of your business. Not only will they save you up to 50% on cost compared to traditional hires, but they also take care of all this time-consuming, repetitive and complex marketing tasks that have been holding you back. And this way, you can concentrate on what truly matters, the core of your business. To learn more about how we can help you to scale up your online sales with a fractional team member, head over to our website, smart-ecommerce-marketing.com, or reach out to me directly and I'll get you the details. You will find the links in the show notes. Thanks for being a part of our podcast community, and remember, your support means the world to me. Until next time, see you then.